Bitcoin fixes teeth. Also, <laughs> tell Bitcoin, me about this. Bitcoin fixes teeth. Normally, uh, people say Bitcoin fixes this or that or many things, but uh, you never realize that could fix specifically things like our health. You know, normally you go to economics or softwares or technology, uh, even if, if it matters with a human being, right? But we focus on the human being. So through over two decades, we have been working, uh, trying to, to aid humanity. In our case, working with uh, our community and uh, impoverished communities here in the Pacific coast of El Salvador. I'm based in El Sonte. Uh, this part uh, normally it's surrounded by many rural areas and uh, with a lot of need. Uh, we match and immaculately Bitcoin help us to be more in shape and uh, to be uh, aware of what our issues are in healthcare, in this case, uh, specifically in oral health. And uh, we got to manage through Bitcoin, you know, fixing teeth, you know, uh, part of uh, uh, to recover, to provide some confidence and dignity to people that has no chance, previous chance or current chance to have access to medical or dental care in our community. Our mission, you know, is a mission that is trying to provide critical dental care, thanks to Bitcoin, to people uh, living in impoverished communities. In the country, in El Salvador, what we started uh, locally in our community, that it's a small one, but we had huge, big issues we have to deal with since many, many long time. Even if we were working, you know, uh, trying to support these communities with our dental offerings, in, in this case for free, we got to uh, waive our fees, we got to offer our workforce for free. We didn't have echo or eco, you know, with our colleagues or other companies or private practices, you know, but um, Bitcoin shows up, you know, and Bitcoin help us to fix teeth. So that's why uh, Bitcoin fixes teeth through Bitcoin Smarts, that it's an initiative set up by BTC Pay Server, Bitcoin Design, and the Antesonte, that it's my private private practice here, a small one, but with a huge heart and uh, with a huge responsibility, you know, that it's provide these people some confidence and dignity through oral rehabilitation and uh, obviously provide, trying to promote equity or equality and inclusiveness to many, many people that cannot afford a dental treatment in our case. By the way, uh, we promote innovation in our dental offerings. Even if we are in a rural area, in the middle of the tropical jungle, we have to deal with a lot of heat, dust, insects, etc. You know, but it's the beauty of this place. And it's the, the main reason that we are based and still here after almost 20 years. Because we believe that if we could change humanity for good you know, and provide them not just health, oral health, but uh, trying to, to uh, promote their projects of life through health, you know, it's going to be a great thing for our community. They are going to be more in shape, more uh, willingness to do something for their community than they used to, right? So that's why Bitcoin fixes teeth uh, through Bitcoin smiles here in El Salvador. And maybe in the near future, 
because we are working with neighboring countries, uh, spread the word and our mission in, in the whole continents. Hopefully, you know, health has to be open source. If you don't pay, you die, and it's worldwide. And in our country, you know, that it's like, uh, uh, it's vulnerable, we have to say it. We are a small country, geographic position, our education, our background in economics made us or make us a vulnerable country. But uh, working in our issues, it's going to uh, promote and provoke a better near future for us and the next generations for sure. In my case, and uh, and uh, proudly uh, with Bitcoin. Uh, it's it's so great to talk to someone with such a happy outlook on life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Sorry about my broken English. Sometimes I could uh, speak too much or lose the idea. But uh, I hope you uh, re, -ans uh, re answers, you know, at some point for me to express in a better way. <laughs> no my, my English is broken Eastern European accent, the worst, the worst <laughs> kind. <laughs> so anyway, I would like to ask you about many of the things that you touched upon there, but uh, maybe let's start with uh, with situating you. I have been to El Salvador. I went to El Salvador to a Bitcoin conference in 2022. There is my speaker speaker page, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was speaking at a Bitcoin conference there, and it seemed really, really, really different from the rest of the world in terms of Bitcoin adoption. And I did not, I was not able to figure out, was it all for just the show or, or things are really happening there? When, when I get off the plane, there was a guy another Bitcoiner who got stopped by the police or, or, or some kind of security person in the airport. And, and I walked, walked, walked. And later on, on the Bitcoin conference, the guy was telling me that, do you know how they let me, let me go? I, I think there was something wrong with his paperwork, but then the police he told the police that uh, he's a Bitcoiner and the police told him that, okay, so show me your Twitter account. And he showed them his Twitter account and they, they let him go. So it was like, wow, like, you know, things, things like this are not, not happening anywhere else. I, I don't know. It was just for show, but the entire, entire country of El Salvador was so welcoming to all the Bitcoiners, uh, flocking into the country in 2022. And that's my question. How's, how's the Bitcoin adoption of El Salvador going right now? Well, in my opinion, uh, the Bitcoin adoption, it's going slow. There are many, uh, when the law announcement, it was like, so it was surprised. It was a surprise, a surprising announcement for us as a country. Bitcoiners uh, never expect you know, having like, or being uh, backed by a country or a government or etc. It's like uh, individual sovereignty, if you want. But yeah, it was surprising for us, the announcement. And uh, I consider uh, the first year of the law announcement, uh, everyone was trying to get some education because the masses didn't have any previous education about Bitcoin and uh, others, uh, they started to get some information by themselves, uh, but never uh, was like the goal to educate people about uh, Bitcoin as a legal tender or Bitcoin itself. So since it was surprising, it was uh, some people were confused as well, because uh, they didn't believe uh, that Bitcoin could be uh, a medium of exchange. They believed and they thought that it was just like a game, you know, a casino game. So many, many people were skeptical, obviously because of the law, uh, 
the companies and the businesses, small businesses, started to get, uh, as I said before, information uh, to see how they can join the wave of the Bitcoinization here in El Salvador and uh, trying to get in shape in their businesses to accept it. Uh, I consider the first year was like a, a fever here about Bitcoin anywhere, you know, any topic, any conversation, uh, television, news, media, etc. was just Bitcoin. But uh, many, many, many doesn't know about it, doesn't heard anything about Bitcoin before. So that year, I consider it was like a high percentage of people, businesses, etc., that uh, started to accept Bitcoin. They understand that this is going to attract uh, people from everywhere in the world, you know, and uh, or even local people that are going to use Bitcoin if it's just like in a slow rate or in a slow percentage. But uh, one year later, everything almost gone, you know, there are businesses, there are uh, small businesses, uh, formal and informal trade uh, businesses that they accept it, but they are not accepting it anymore, right? So I don't know, uh, Others are skeptical and uh, match Bitcoin, obviously, with a project, a personal project with the president. But some people don't like him, you know, or don't support the idea of having Bitcoin as a legal tender. So they thought and they believe that not supporting Bitcoin, uh, they are not supporting something that they are not agree with right so i consider many other businesses that started slowly catching or getting or accepting payments in bitcoin are uh, more educated now are more in shape in their businesses know about bitcoin wallets uh know about lightning network because at first they didn't know about it and uh, I consider it's, it continues slow, right? But more people are, uh, I think, are motivated uh, to, to continue with the Bitcoin wave here in El Salvador. And others, uh, mostly businesses, are uh, like discovering and see chances in Bitcoin businesses. So they know that it's like uh, a legal tender here. So if you are not on, or if you don't want to accept Bitcoin patents, you are losing the, the, the pace. You're not catching, you know, like the reality because it's something we have to deal with. Bitcoin as a legal tender here. So I'd have to say it's going slow. People that had started accepting and working with Bitcoin are better now like managing uh, the way they accept it and others stop doing it, you know, and new people are on board of uh, the Bitcoin community, in this case, in all South. I think the advantage right now is for people from abroad, foreigners, uh, digital nomads, as they are called, and people that it's like, uh, working directly with Bitcoin companies, right? So I consider El Salvador, it's like a fertile ground uh, for Bitcoiners from everywhere in the world, you know, uh, who want or who want to, to, um, to create or make a difference, you know, in, in the community and obviously for their lives. But El Salvador, it's like, Maybe 25% of people, maybe less, are working directly with this. In my case, uh, all my... You mean 25% uh, of El Salvador population? Yes, maybe less, you know. I think it's less, 
But personally, in my case, I work with Bitcoin all the time. I don't have uh, to exchange for fiat money. In my supply chain, in my supply chain, you know, of uh, our clinic, I mean uh, dental suppliers, dental laboratory, uh, materials, equipment, etc. Uh, they are accepting uh, the Bitcoin we have in, in order to get like the goods and services, right? But at first they didn't want to. They said, no, uh, we don't want, we don't, we don't believe in that. We prefer fiat money. Why don't you exchange it? But it's part of my, my small education I could provide. I'm a learner, you know. Uh, I'm still learning, and every day you continue learning about Bitcoin. But since I try to, I try them to be fluently with my work and my initiative, so they start to to understand being educated about Bitcoin and accepting those payments. But it's my case, right? Uh, normally, other people doesn't want to know about it, and they are not interested. Uh, they have lack of, I think, of uh, encouragement about getting information or discover Bitcoin, even if it's within us and between us. Twenty twenty five percent is a huge number. I mean, I, I, I would be even, I would have been even surprised if you said one percent. I mean. 1% would be huge as well. It's a, The thing is, it's not that El Salvador isn't ready for Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin isn't ready for El Salvador. It's, it's us Bitcoin developers who are failing you guys. Uh, and I, am, I firmly believe this. We can, we can separate two, two things here. The store of value and the uh, medium of exchange, right? So... On a store of value, Bitcoin is kicking ass, but on the medium of exchange property, how fast, how cheap, how anonymously you can send money to other people and how easily, well, Bitcoin is not doing well, not even with the Lightning Network, it is failing a lot. Us Bitcoin developers are failing you in, in, in this sense, but uh, hopefully we... We can, we can come up with something. As you might know, I have worked the past decade on Bitcoin privacy and ma making first making Bitcoin anonymous. Uh, we achieved that and then we wanted to make it easier to use faster and cheaper uh, anonymously, of course. Unfortunately, it turns out making Bitcoin anonymous is a dangerous, dangerous adventure. And uh, I don't really want to go into my personal challenges in, in this, but uh, I, had to, I had to stop working on this and, and privacy developers are getting thrown in jail. There was, there was a point where I was really thinking that maybe I should pack all my things and my family and move to El Salvador, but you know, who knows how long Bukele is going to be there, or even if developers would be protected even under Bukele, right? So, so things aren't looking that good on that front. But uh, what I wanted to emphasize here is that us Bitcoin developers did not build a good enough payment system for you guys to use yet. Or did we tell me about how your experience with with btc pay server and bitcoin acceptance is my experience with btc pay server made me more aware about the things involved with Bitcoin. you know sovereignty anonymous uh worldwide peer-to-peer etc censorship resistant so uh in my case uh btc pay server made the hard work. For them, it could be like easy, you know, because I'm not that technical. In that time when I started to work with them, I wasn't that aware about privacy or knowing in deeply knowledge about wallets and things like that. 
but since uh, working with them, I started to be more interested about privacy and uh, about payments. In this case, to save Bitcoin as well, you know. So when we get the crowdfund, that it was like a BTC Pay Server, Bitcoin Design in the Intesonte, and created Bitcoin Smiles in a matter of two weeks. Since uh, the work I was doing 20 years ago. So the technical stuff was easy, I consider for them. But for me, it sparked some light inside me about how can I get or manage the funds, right? And, uh, or how could, how, how could I be uh, transparent about how am I use the funds? Uh, how can I keep it from people that it's trying to do harm to it? I started to, to, to get information, but we decided that since Bitcoin, since BTC Pay Server, you know, it's an open source software, like you working in free open source software too, I decided and I believe in them and they believe in my mission. So about transparency and about security, we decided that the funds we get like uh, from the crowd fund are going to be held by themselves. You know, they tried to send me the funds to me in order, you know, to, to manage the funds. So I could easily say, okay, give it to me. I'm going to deal with and I'm going to see what's going on. But as I said before, I'm a learner. So I could be novel on privacy and things like that. So I decided with them, no, don't send me anything. I believe and I know that in your hands, it's going to be in great hands, you know. So we are going to work. And when we finish, for example, one patient, we are going to send an invoice and they are going to take care of that invoice. And it's the, word, it's the way we've been working, right? For me, it's going to be safe that they could manage, like, the, you know, the funds. Instead of me, that maybe I don't have some principles about privacy and to deal with those type of funds, right? Not in my phone, right? Or in uh, all computer, you know what I mean? So that's what we decided that BTC Pay Server are going to, to deal with. And it, it was uh, part of our sovereignty decided that. And since I'm working with them, I'm more aware about that, our skill set, I mean, our workforce. Our goal is uh, to get sovereignty, and it's not just individual, but we could promote and provide sovereignty to our community, to our country, to the world, through open source software. And normally, people here, colleagues, are kind of jealous because they don't want to share the way they work, or they don't want to share or to be open about their techniques. But since I'm working in open sources with an open source software, my techniques, my way of work has to be open to everybody, right? So I understand through BTC Pay uh, partnership, uh, a sense of family, a sense of community, a sense of open source, sovereignty, you know, it was like uh, being part of uh, a, a group that I never thought since we've been talking to with Pavlinix, that it was the first person I got to meet from BTC Pay. Uh, I never realized how serious and how the huge responsibility is going to show for me, right? So I feel responsible. Uh, I have not a burden, but I could feel that those, that responsibility, it's huge. So it has to be in the strong hands. So I cannot be weak or have doubts about where I'm going to head off. But since I'm working with them, I'm learning about those things, privacy, 
etc. That's why I decided not to get the fonts in my phone or in a, a small device or a Raspberry Pi, you know. It was better uh, for BTC Pay, uh, my godfather, you know, uh, to deal with. And I'm here in the ground with working every day. So not your keys, not your coins. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, but but let's let's move on from the BTC Pay server is very close to my heart because Nicola Doria is my mentor in software development. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, Nicola Doria is the person who created BTC Pay server, right? And before BTC Pay server, I worked with him on various projects. I was even the best man on his wedding. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but how I found you is through BTC Pay Server. So you guys created a movie about Nicola Dori and BTC Pay Server, right? And, and I saw this uh, dentist from El Salvador. <laughs> and what I'm doing right now is I'm creating a YouTube series, a Rejuvenation Olympics interview series. So. I am interviewing athletes who are competing with each other, who can slow their pace of aging down the most, right? So I was thinking, well, you know, you're a dentist, that's, that's close enough. And I still want to be involved in Bitcoin and I really would like to know what's happening in El Salvador. So let's have a chat. <laughs> um, so, so let's, let's, let's move a bit, uh, Let's let's talk a bit about you now. Can you tell me your life story in a way that might be relevant about how El Salvador was changing over the years? Well, uh, I I'm from the eighties. You know, when I was born, we were in the middle of a civil war. Uh, El Salvador has been through a lot of changes and situations that made us vulnerable, as we say before and a resilience or a resilient country as well. I consider our population or Salvadorans are uh, the best, uh, how could I say, the best we produce here in El Salvador is our people. Resilient, hard worker, open, happy, even if we struggle, you know, but they are going to show the best they could the best things. So since I'm uh, from the 80s and living through this civil war, I had to see a lot of destruction, a lot of confrontation. Many of us, if, if we are not all, the population lose someone in the civil war, at least. Uh, I had to see, uh, you know, a starving. Uh, we almost have a can of tuna or something to eat, etc. But uh, since uh, the Civil War, I had like the chance to get education, uh, thanks to my family or my father. Uh, I had a uh, great school. Uh, I had uh, a wonderful education with my mom as well in 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 ethical or moral uh, values. I could tell, you know, she, she always uh, taught me how to help others uh, because we are suffering or we are struggling. But uh, she implanted me. You didn't join any gang? No, no, not at all. <laughs> you know? But that is like a product of the civil war, right? So since uh, the start of the century, we had military dictatorships. Indigenous, you know, we're like annihilated, annihilated to, you know, uh, many people has who, to go, who, uh, excuse who, who were annihilated? Ah, uh, some groups of indigenous here. Indigenous natives. groups. Yes, I'm sorry, ah, yes. So, uh, we been through these dictatorships, military, then uh, the, the red wave of Communism came from South America, right? And it's starting to, to go up. So El Salvador has been through many, many situations. 
uh, they call it, uh, we have a democracy, they call it democracy since the 80s, uh, when it was our first like uh, time we, we could vote to elect someone that it's not going to put like a dictatorship or a military dictatorship because we have so many. And um, so I could tell that the struggling moment made us what we are. So the thing is, many people during the Civil War had to flee away from the country, uh, obviously and specifically to the United States, you know, in order to get a different future, to work for their families, to send some remittances, because they didn't have any opportunity or nothing was set here uh, to do a project of life. Since uh, that situation happened, the U.S. started to uh, deport many people, you know. So when they got deported, they came to El Salvador, and it was like the same or even worse. No conditions, no uh, chance to develop your skills, no education, lack of many basic things, you know. So that's why they started to, to create, uh, how can I say, a product of the civil war. So actually, we were in the post war, right? So they start to gather in the US because they have to defend themselves from Mexicans, from black people, from Chinese people, or even white people. So that's why I could tell maybe it's the origin of uh, these gangs or these groups, you know, that with the time they started to become more and more stronger more organized and it was like the huge problem we used to have right but it's uh, about the chances and opportunities that the country had my case was the opposite you know even if i had a struggle time uh, i had good education and i had the chance to continue university and get my career and even if we didn't have barely money to continue to eat to get basic things, you know. So it was part of our sacrifice. That's why, because I had an opportunity, a small war dish in my table, the way to get educated, at least academically, uh, it made me continue my mission, you know, because there are people that have had no and doesn't have still, you know, opportunities or chances to, to do what they could do for their lives you know so i was i had a, a happy a happy childhood you know i'm the youngest of three brothers uh, my family was a five people family it was happy i had to uh, play football i did sports i did some art i had to uh, Actually, I was working during 15 years as a radio and television broadcaster here in the country. So it's part of my background. Even if we were in a struggling society, I had a chance to promote myself and do things that I felt fulfilled. And it's fulfilling my life still. Practically, when I got or decided to come here and stay in El Sonte and work with with impoverished communities made me lose everything, even the respect from colleagues, even my family, even my friends, partners, etc. But losing everything and being out of my comfort zone made me and led me to everything. So uh, that is part of my background. I am a Bitcoin Smiles Doctor of Dental Surgery. I have almost two decades of experience. I got to fulfill uh, preventative community programs. I have the chance to go abroad through scholarships or fellowships, in this case, California, Boston, to uh, study dental software for manufacturing and dental software for our design. It's the way I got to know Bitcoin in 2014-15 in San Jose, California. And uh, it has a similarity 
uh, between the, the Bitcoin software and all the technology are you using Bitcoin? And um, I used to be an actor in, as a part of a theater group when I was young. Uh, I work as a broadcaster, as I said. I used to have 13 voice characters. And many, many years ago, I even was censored by some government 12 years ago, you know, because of the, of the criticism, constructive criticism we were doing, you know. But I think I was fulfilled in many things. Uh, and that led me to, to do something for my community. So I move away from the city and the comfort that I used to have to say so, to El Sonte. So I came here in 2005 uh, to get my degree as a doctor. I have to work with uh, the rural areas. They sent me to the highest part of the mountain and the middle place for me to stay in between the city and my work unit was El Sonte. So I was seduced in 2005. I had 25 years old. You know, I was seduced by the surf, the tranquility of the place, uh, the rural area. The city was so fast for me. I used to have three, four jobs that I was like tired of. So uh, actually I continue working with that, but I got to focus on and concentrate about my career. That I'm like, uh, I do have to say I'm a pretty good one in what am I doing. And it's not about ego, it's about the trust people have in me and the way I try to focus and get ready to do and to spread my workforce and my skill set in a rural area, right? Not in a prestige private practice in the city. So I had to accept that I had to deal with no profits and uh, a lot of struggling, you know? Uh, but I'm really immersed in this community, so I'm still here 20 years later. So the chance and opportunity that I had when I was a young and my childhood, the love of my parents, even if they split, you know, it's what it's uh, made me stronger and give me like this, the strength to continue doing a mission like this in this place. So that's part of my background. What would your mother say about your joining the BTC Pay server gang? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, yes. So uh, she, it was just a joke. No, yeah. but actually it's a good thing to tell. My mom, because she's really close to me, she's a bit sick and I'm trying to get in contact with her, you know, etc. Uh, she thought that I was losing my time and my life living in a place like in some. You know, she was, no, go to the city, go or stay in another country that I had the chance to stay. But I always believe that I have to, to do something for my country and my community. So uh, she said, no, you, are, you, have, you took a wrong decision, etc. When I told her about I'm working with the BTC Pay gang or Bitcoin, she said, no, what are you doing? Because she didn't know anything. Last year, uh, I had uh, the honor to get my mom a visit in El Salvador. She lives in Mexico. So she visited me and it matched uh, the Adopting Bitcoin conference. So I invited her to go to the conference and to see my, uh, my keynote and to get to know the people that I'm surrounded with, etc. So she, uh, she, she tried, she uh, understand at her pace, you know, what I was doing and what I need to. Uh, she's proud, you know, she's uh, very supportive. Moms always want the best for their kids. So she thought that I wasn't in, 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 in a good position. 
even if I'm struggling, but I am, and I got to show her what am I doing with who, and she's like, oh, BTC Pay, you know, Bitcoin. Ah. She's so proud right now, and I know that she doesn't know deeply, but in her heart and her mind know that I'm in great hands because uh, uh, they are very supportive. Bitcoin community, BTC Pay, uh, they are very supportive with me, you know, and believe in the mission. So I feel like backed and covered from them, you know, and that's a huge responsibility. I cannot fail, right? Failure, it's part of our lives, totally. But it's not on my mind that I'm going to fail delivering or doing my best. But she's like <laughs> so happy and so, so proud that I'm with that gang. Yeah, you know, in the in the olden days, the highest level of achievement was that if you appeared in television, right? And, uh, and, and, and so if she's still proud of you right now, even though you spent 15 years in television, then that's an achievement. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Because when I was in the media, she said, no, I don't like what you do. You know, that's your, oh. the, the same, losing your time, blah, blah, blah. You have to be a great doctor and stop doing what you are doing. But now uh, she she's really proud and see the documentary, you know, and to see me part of it, you know, she's like so proud. And she was in tears and she said, forgive me about uh, me telling you that you're losing your time, whatever, I just want the best for you. She doesn't have to, I don't have to forgive her for nothing. She made me the way she is, and I'm proud of it. And, and, and then you said you're a dental surgeon. No, I'm, I'm not sure how that, that works there. So is there, of course, there is a difference between a dentist and a dental surgeon, but uh, what about in, in, in Azonte, right? You said you... You did that on the top of the mountain, like were you a dental surgeon or a dentist as well, or how, how's, how's that work? Well, the degree we had at university, it's the doctorate, right? Doctor of Dental Surgery, also known as dentist, you know, but there are general dentists, there are maxillofacial mm -hmm. surgeons, and we are like managed and uh, ready to work as a general dentist and to deal with minor surgeries. Normally, uh, nowadays, uh, they are not given the doctorate. They just uh, promote you as a license of dentistry, you know. So I got to study eight years plus the year that I had to go uh, and work with the mountain, that it was the more unique part of the government ministry of health, right? So uh, that's why like my social, social year. So practically you are a dentist, but you have to do that to, in order to, to meet and get to know the, the needs of these people, rural areas, etc. Uh, normally, the Ministry of Health through health through these work units are just like offering corrective things. I mean, if you have pain, I'm going to correct your pain, but no prevention. Maybe, but it's incipient and no rehabilitation, just correction. So it's like a mutilation. But that's what I try to do here, not just correction, like try to ease the pain of these people, but doing correcting and rehabilitation. And that's why the main goal of Bitcoin is miles, yeah. providing rehabilitation to these people. They have to, they have gone through uh, many minor surgeries, uh, multiple extractions, you know, 
uh, bone grafts, etc. And after months of healing, they got to get the dentures or the prosthesis, right? So uh, besides that, uh, I'm working with prevention because people say, why don't you work with uh, kids and prevention? That it's like the main goal. Because uh, we decided uh, with BTC Pays and the mission to provide confidence and dignity to these forgotten people because we uh, identify that the elderly people of our community had critical dental health issues, right? So we started with them providing dignity, recovering confidence, and rehabilitating these people. And then we started to work with the local school and kids between 6 and 15 years old in school age children, right? Uh, doing preventative things in order for them not to repeat what like the, the previous generation had, right? So, so what's, your, uh, what's your set of preventative guidelines there, like uh, brush teeth, what else? Yes, uh, but normally uh, people just uh, give a speech and about how to clean your teeth, how to brush your teeth, foods that are going to help you not uh, getting cavities or caries. But I have to go to the school or get them to my office and we uh, do Pits and fissure sealants, that it's a preventative treatment. We work on their mouth and we do cavities without using the drill, you know, just for preventative things. The pits and fissures are covered with uh, a special like material that it has, some of them has fluoride and they are not bothering the way you chew or the way you had your occlusion. So these are uh, helping you to clean better and easy, right, when you brush your teeth. And we use sometimes fluoride, you know, in a small uh, amounts, in a safe small amounts. But normally uh, the 95%, 95 percent of kids here had cavities, really, really affected by infection. So we have to remove teeth, uh, we have to fill in their cavities, we put pits and fissure sealants, we do cleanings. Normally they go to the school with a gauze and they clean the teeth. No, we do it in a professional way with our equipment. So we are creating a platform for these kids it's an epidemiologic thing, you know, to manage and work with them since they have the temporary dentition. So uh, we are going to follow the treatments and providing maintenance to them till they have like the skills and the capacity uh, to take care of themselves, right? So we take action on these kids, not just like showing how to brush but to work on their oral cavities and providing cleanings, pits and fissure sealants, extractions, emergencies. We want to offer even like orthodontic things, you know, but because if we remove a teeth, we are going to change the way they are going to grow. So uh, mm. we are trying to be a really, uh, really a complete offering of our dental services, you know. But it's a way, uh, a great way to start. So we work with elderly above sixty years old, people that cannot afford it, that they want or they need uh, dentures, and with kids in a school age children. By the way, uh, we have and we are working with a Mayan community in Guatemala, in Lake Atitlan. So we have, here we have approximately 100 plus kids in the preventative community program. And in Guatemala, we have 35 more kids. We were last year there in Lake Atitlan, but it's because it's the issues, it's similar to El Salvador. 
I think it's more, they have more lack of many things. And uh, that's why we are working with Bitcoin with Smiles in a mission there. I understand in Brazil, they want to replicate Bitcoin Smiles and in Africa too. Actually, we are working and using a technique that we're born in Tanzania, in Africa. Since we work in rural areas with no electricity, with no water or our equipment, it's, uh, we are using a technique uh, with a uh, special material that uh, we can use even our fingers to, to do that treatment. It needs help in the communities. And we teach the, the leaders in the community or the parents of these kids how to manage this material and put the treatments by themselves. So it's part education, it's part our work, uh, and I think we are delivering and changing the, the reality of these communities. And prevention is part of our offerings, not just rehabilitation, and correction obviously is in between of those. So we are offering uh, complete things. I forgot something to say. Since I was working with dental softwares, uh, we didn't have some equipment before. I didn't have a computer or a software for design, the CAD CAM or a scanner. But since we've been working with uh, Bitcoin Smiles and I'm like uh, trained to work with dental softwares, we got to manage and get a scanner and get the dental software for design, get a computer, you know. So I what, what? my and I my own dental laboratory in the cloud. So I could scan your mouth in a remote area or a stone model. I send it to my computer. I decide. So how I... do you scan my mouth? Like See, I take a picture or what? You How could you use pictures. You could use pictures for sure as a complement of doing your scan. In my case, my scanner is a desktop scan a scanner. So I take a stone model and the stone model of your mouth going to the scanner and the scanner take the STL image. Then it's going to my software of design so i could create uh crowns veneers uh splints prosthesis etc so i could send this to the milling machine that it's in the city a milling machine or a 3d printer it's about twenty thousand dollars or seventy thousand dollars for a milling machine it's unachievable for us but this the design and the scanning we did it here in a remote area and we send it to the city and they manufacture the structures we can so we work remotely as well as our own dental digital laboratory on the cloud so it's a part of our offerings here i am trying to give these people the same attention, people, rich people, or people that can afford it. I'm offering that to people that cannot. So it's part of me promoting uh, like uh, innovation in my dental treatments here in a rural area. So it's part of the dignity and the, the inclusiveness we are trying to do. That, that is exactly how innovation works. You know, there is a there is a new product. You come up with it, and the price initially is very high because it takes a lot of time and effort and ingenuity and innovation to to come up with that product. And who's going to buy that product? Well, the rich people. They are going to be the earliest guinea pigs, right? The, the, the lab rats uh, who you are <laughs> testing your products on. And as, you, as, the, as they are buying more and more of these, you, you get more and more money and you are able to bring down the price more and more. And you are able to then dissipate all that, all that product to, to less richer and richer people. And that is exactly how innovation works. Yeah. <laughs> 
it is and uh not even in the city there are practices that they don't know about digital dentistry you know they have a prestige practice they're really really well sh in good shape but they don't know about digital dentistry we are in a remote area rural area and we are working with digital dentistry so it's like um uh, you know it's two different worlds but we are taking we are leapfrogging in the way we are offering our dental products obviously there are there are foreigners that come to town and they want uh, they want to work or they need dental treatments so it's part of the offerings we do you know we don't have to envy uh, nothing in that way so we we provide upgraded solutions to to challenging cases and challenging treatments what about what about so i saw a presentation you gave and you talked that talked about diabetes that it's a it's a big problem there and indeed i did rec realize that when i was there you guys were eating a lot of food like pupusa right? uh, <laughs> it's like fat and carbs so so is is there like a diabetes epidemic or um, does it have any connection to dental care <laughs> yes it has a great and big connection normally all the elderly people we've been working with they all of them have diabetes hypertension parkinson disease and it's uh, they are not being treated they said no we don't go to control we don't have medicines uh, even dementia right so this it's well related with their poor oral health conditions we uh, we find or we found this people 90% of these patients we treated they have really poor periodontal conditions sometimes i just had to remove even worms from their mouths pus infection bone loss and mobility bleeding bad smell malnourishment everything not even in the books you can find this type of problem but those things the whole bacteria they manage in their mouth are related with the heart conditions the hypertension the diabetes everything that i mentioned before so it's uh, it's uh, that's why we identify this critical elderly group you know because they were abandoned forgotten and normally the diet of uh, the country because you could find sugar you could find sodas a lot of carbs things that maybe they are not proper to your nourishment you know are linked to these uh, diseases and uh, normally all of them even me i could say uh, sometimes we used to get uh, a little we can you been struggling about you were starving and the the thing you took to to calm down it's just carbs you know but it's everywhere it's flooded in carbs here so that it's uh, a part of uh, well, the diseases uh, they are having it is so you are right about those things so uh, we want uh, the next generation not to get this but it's a complex situation we want and we have to deal with so uh we want to do with integrity normally we discover this and we try to get in contact with the physician or the facilities where they can be treated you know because if they are so affected it's not easy for us as well to work with people doing some surgeries when they are not in shape in, in systemic in systemic way right so uh you could find a lot of uh, diseases like that here you know sometimes maybe in the country 
you know, there is a transition there that uh, when, a, when a country is first first starting to experience the benefits of industrialization, then, you know, they bring in the sugars, the, the carbs, the um, all, all, all these things. But as they get richer and you guys are going to get like crazy rich because your entire country is Bitcoinized <laughs> and Bitcoin is the future. So as you guys get richer and become the next Singapore or Dubai, then, uh, then, then, then you're going to experience a much, 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 much better diet. Like everyone will just have the time of actually taking care of the diets because right now they probably have bigger problems than, than that. And this is how Bitcoin fixes teeth. <laughs> That's why Bitcoin fixes teeth. And you mentioned about the pupusas. Pupusas, it's a lot of carbs. You know, we are children of the corn. So the corn has to be present in our diet. But uh, it mixed with pork, with cheese, etc. You tasted it before. Right, I, I could tell. Yes, yes. But uh, yes, that it's the top of mind of our community diet. Normally, we have small places, and maybe you cannot get access to a complete meal full of of good things. You know, uh, proteins, mm -hmm. uh, carbs, uh, etc. But the top of mind, it's uh, it gets some pupusas, you know, some coke or something, and it's like the cheapest and it's like the fastest way for you to stop the 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 starving. So yeah, that's everywhere. You know? So pupusas normally it's our first choice to eat economically, and uh, it's the fastest and the easiest way to get something to. We try to so, to change the diet of the small tiendas at the school, you know, uh, offering fruits, offering uh, other different type of diets, focus on water, you know, potable water, but normally we are flooded off uh, sugar drinks and things like that. So maybe we are going to change it in the near future for for better for us, for everyone. Yeah. Uh, certainly will. I mean, Bitcoin is the future, right? And you guys are the best position of all the countries out there. So I would like to ask you about Azonte because I went to Azonte and what I saw there blew my mind. And I don't know how real that was. So walking in the park, uh, it, walking in the beach for like, 10 15 minutes there were bitcoiners everywhere guys with bitcoin tattoos and whatnot but just walking and and there were bitcoiners so i don't know was that because because there was like a big incoming bitcoiners at that time when i was there or is that is that bitcoin beach right that's how you guys call it is that like always like that? There are a lot of experts coming into the country over the years, more and more Bitcoiners. How, how, how's that? How's that happening? Well, yeah, we have a lot of tourism here. El Sonte is one of, it's one of out of 11 small villages from our municipality. So El Sonte, it's the most, I think it's the biggest one. And it's the tourism area, about 3,500 people. Uh, many tourism, Bitcoiners are coming to El Salvador, but it's a must for them. They are to, moving there. They're totally. I do have to say gentrification, it's happening, right? Uh, prices are increasing. The gap between rich and poor, it's bigger now. Since it's a tourist area, many people from outside El Salvador, foreigners are coming here and are getting some land. Actually, there is no, not much land left here. So they are building their houses. They are constructing more apartments. Uh, they are 
like building uh, new hotels. Uh, tourism are increasing and it's a lot of people are coming every day. Mostly Bitcoiners, uh, people from the city too, right? But uh, since it's like uh, a place where Bitcoin were a spark, I have to accept too that not many people that it used to be or used to accept Bitcoin before, it's accepting it now. Local people. But uh, obviously I got to meet and I got to work with some uh, programmers and friends that work in programming that are from the Bitcoin companies or Bitcoin industries. Uh, friends not that close and others close friends that are coming here to see by themselves if they could like uh, do business here, uh, if they could get some land, others for a surf, they have five star waves every day of the year. So you could find many Bitcoiners around. Since uh, they are coming here, most of them live here actually. So they are not visitors anymore. They live here. And uh, they are trying to apply for the residency and from uh, the legal papers they could get here to get their base here. I understand that our companies that are coming to El Sonte, not just El Salvador, to build and have their headquarters here, you know, many, many offices. And uh, since they're not like uh, find, finding some places to stay here in El Sonte, they are looking for the nearest areas or other beaches here, you know, neighboring beaches or others because they don't like, uh, they cannot, uh, they don't like too much heat. They are trying to go to the city or they are trying to go to the coffee plantation that it's on the east of El Salvador. It's about three hours from here. So it's, uh, it's a nice area with uh, coffee plantations. The weather, it's fresh. It's not like really, really warm or hot here. Uh, but since those areas aren't a developing area as well, they have uh, deep issues to deal with too, right? Uh, it is supposed that Bitcoin City is going to be on the east of El Salvador. So next to this area are like places, towns that need help. I mean, they have like their index of developing is not very good or it's really, really low, right? But uh, yes, many visitors, many Bitcoiners, uh, enthusiastic, trying the, with the idea to live here, surf, uh, for them, it's cheaper than their places. They could perceive or they feel that they have freedom here. So, uh, but we will see. Time will tell too, because if you want to get a company here, it's a fertile background, uh, right? But obviously, you have to do some formal things, you know, some formal to fulfill formal requirements, you know, that personally you will feel that if it's like a plus for you or don't, right? But uh, I think uh, El Salvador is open for Bitcoiners. Uh, they are really friendly with Bitcoiners. I could tell that Bitcoiners could live here on a Bitcoin standard, right? But uh, consider that local people has to catch up and try to uh, to show more interest for to get a symbiosis, right, between the Bitcoiners from outside El Salvador and the Bitcoiners here or the normal population, right? So yeah, it's changing really, really fast. Uh, it's not cheap anymore. Right, it used to be cheap, right? Not that cheap, but now it's one of the parts of 
the country that it's like quite expensive you know, in in average, right? So, but it's changing. Services are improving. You know, uh, potable water are coming, not for everyone, but little by little are like coming to El Sonte. Uh, new restaurants, new hotels, new uh, hostels, new services are trying to are are go are being created. Uh, many people programming from their rooms in an ocean view taking advantage of the tropical weather. What is one thing that you strongly believe to be the case, but very few people agree with you on? Um, in general? In general. Sovereignty. I mean, working with Bitcoin made me look crazy for everyone who was surrounding me. But uh, I consider the risk for me to work with Bitcoin, the risk is to be free, and it's about freedom. People disagree strongly because I am not part of what society is telling you about. So they disagree the way I'm looking for sovereignty. I could tell that it's one part, at least for people here. Other thing, it's uh, well, maybe, uh, my work it's so demanding they consider that i could get or i need to get a lot of profit for the work i do but uh, my prestige it's what can i do for my fellow human beings things that are fulfilling for me are not fulfilling for others it's part of uh, the research you do in your own life Maybe I found what I want and what I like and what I feel fulfilled to do. And it's helping humanity through my skill sets and my profession. So maybe the way I do it is not, it's people are not agreeing the way I do it or what I do with whom. So I consider we have different like things and uh, meanings about sovereignty. It must yeah. necessarily be not correct in the eyes of most people, right? <laughs> Very few people agree with you. That's where the value lies. So what do you bring to the marketplace? Not, not how can people support you, but listeners of this. How can they, how can they exchange value with you? How can they give money to you? Uh, can they, can they take your, your digital dentistry services? So what, what do you bring to the marketplace? Top notch technology, dental treatments. I could offer prevention, correction and rehabilitation. I offer digital dentistry. They have to be in El Zonte? Uh, they have to be here in El Zonte, totally, as a patient, right? But if someone from Africa is sending me the STL file as scanning, I could design and manufacture a dental structure here in El Salvador, and then I could send it to Africa. So the goal for me is as well to create a platform between dental designers from the whole world who could work designing structures, veneers, crowns, splints, prostheses, you know, and they could earn sats for their design. And someone, someone locally could manufacture this uh, and uh, work with their patients locally. Here, if you showed off, like personally, uh, I could scan your denture and work with that. I could scan your oral mouth, your mouth, you know, and could work with that. Or if you are sending me like pictures, it's a compliment for my scan to do something with that. But if you need a crown, for example, I could 
I have to do some preparation on your mouth. So it's practically, you need to be here in the dental chair. But I could offer that, you know, designing uh, for structures, dental structures, and manufacturing as well. Not personally, but we have the workflow with one of my mentors that is in the city, and he is a pioneer in digital dentistry here in the country. So I could offer uh, conventional treatments, you know, fillings, cleanings, extractions, minor surgeries, root canals, uh, bridges, crowns, posts, uh, and not conventional treatments. I mean conventional and digital treatments that it's totally metal free and it's uh, high a hundred percent like aesthetic, you know, uh, offering like uh, the structures with uh, free of metal and could be the same day, right? Normally people are in a hurry and you have to work or you have to wait for a crown maybe two weeks, but we could manage and work just in a couple of hours. You could get your dentures for your crown, for example, uh, in the workflow we have as uh, digital dentistry. So we work uh, and we offer uh, totally uh, our attention. It's customized, it's personal, you know. We are not waiting for thousands and thousands of people. We, me, as a family practitioner, I do have to provide my quality time. I'm working with human beings. So I am not going to be rich and I don't want to get 100 cavities per day. I prefer to take a case, a case of a human being, providing you upgraded solutions with uh, integrity, you know, body, mind, and a spirit, and my skill set that I could offer it to you. It's not about the amount I'm going to do. It's about uh, the quality I'm providing to someone who deserves. So you could find everything in our clinic, uh, even if it's simple or if it's complex. Uh, implants as well. You could get implants with us. That is uh, the most like uh, updated treatments we are offering. But uh, our small office here, uh, it's uh, ready for many things. But for example, implants and other things, major surgery, we got to go to the city. It's about 25 minutes from here. So we have, as I said, with my mentor, a place where we could deal with those type of treatments, you know, but it's really personalized and uh, we are the accompaniments in every step of the way. So uh, it's what we could offer, a warm uh, attention, inclusiveness, equality, quality, access, innovation, and obviously uh, the best we could do as a dental profession. Everyone is more than welcome, people who can afford it, and the people who cannot, uh, obviously, uh, through Bitcoin, we are offering solutions. Obviously, we have to research and we focus on people that really need help, you know, and, uh, but it's, we are open to everybody. And we consider that through Bitcoin, uh, we are going to change the health of our community, humanity, and obviously open source all the healthcare uh, offerings we could we could do we believe in freedom and we believe in freedom of healthcare as well enrique bitcoin dentist from el salvador btc pay server gang represent <laughs> un placer thank you very much un placer <laughs>